The Lake Forest Podcast is supported by viewers, listeners, and businesses just like you. Looking for the best pool supplies? Look no further than Doheny's Pool Supplies. With a history dating back to 1967, this family-owned business offers everything families need to keep their pools clean and sparkling from chemicals to equipment. Plus, customers enjoy free shipping on all orders. Visit Doheny's Pool Supplies today at doheny.com, D-O-H-E-N-Y.com to learn more. Forest Bluff Real Estate Team serves Illinois, Wisconsin, Lake Forest, and Lake Bluff. John Joseph Fidus, Laura Lee Van Fleet, and of course, Michelle Parnell. Get a free market analysis now at forestbluffrealestate.com. For the best cannabis in the world, look no further than Iliad Epic Grow. Owned by Lake Bluff's own Rich Ruzich, they are a cannabis cultivation center focusing on hard-to-find small batch products that will delight both the occasional user and Ganjier. When visiting Michigan, ask for it by name, Epic Products, Exceptional Process. For more information, email info at iliadgrow.com. AV Communications has been helping first responders arrive safely since 1983. It's owned by Lake Forest own Mike Havy. Check them out at havycommunications.com. We'd also like to say we're thankful for our Patreon supporters. Matt A, Elizabeth C, Costa, Lance, Otto, RDM, John C. And shout out to the Lake Forest Breakfast Group, Broad Stop and Captain Mike's in Kenosha, the Greentown Tavern, and the Frolic Lounge in Waukegan. What a great interview with Coach Steve, huh, Joe? He is awesome. That's a great program. I hope they uh, sell a lot of Christmas trees and wreaths uh, this Christmas. Um, like I said, we're going to put one there in your like, uh, podcast uh, studio there to look we're, awesome. We're right, we're right down the, kids, the street. And then we'll make sure the kids room. won't knock anything over, any of your valuable artifacts there. Yeah, well, that's true. Just leave the guitars alone. What else do you have on your uh, list there, Joe? So I want to talk with you, Pete, about a letter that you wrote uh, this week, and you posted yes. on your uh, on the podcast Facebook page as well as in the patch. That's but correct. As of the airing of this show, or at least the recording of this show on Wednesday morning here, um, you had an exchange, or, or well, there was an exchange like a week before. Uh, there was this group, uh, Lake Forest. Transparency or Lake Forest for Transparency Group, sort of which transparency. Is, what's that? Sort of transparency group. Sort of <laughs> opaque. Uh, <laughs> they're the opaque group. Um, and I think we want to talk a little bit about some of the stuff that's gone down in uh, the caucus meeting. We talked a little bit about that. They uh, uh, they tried to have a rerun of their. Um, uh, pack the place uh, meeting last yeah. fall where they stayed, got a bunch of their friends to come and uh, vote against the caucus uh, slate for Randy Tack and everything. Um, so they tried to, to repeat that. I believe it was Joanne Desmond sent out an email to folks. And right. so after the same thing, and the, the vote was pretty solid two to one. Um, but uh, the uh, against and it kind of mirrored the uh, election returns. So I think, you know, talking about uh, transparency and stuff, look, everyone's entitled to an opinion. This is a democracy and community engagement is a, is a great thing. But I think it's becoming clear that while they may be able to get more people in a room one evening because of an email chain, uh, the majority of residents of this community uh, support what the caucus is doing. They voted overwhelmingly for Randy Tack. Uh, in the mayoral race. And again, when we play the pack the place game, they cannot pack the place if it's a fair shot. Um, it was two to one. Now they're complaining now, I guess, in the newspaper to Dan Dorfman about um, Dan the, the Dorfman. ballot change. That's that the their marketing guy. <laughs> Him you and know, uh, Jonah uh, Meadows, the, the you patch. Know, it's a shame that there isn't more, and you and Scoo have had some really good discussions about how the Lake Forest, there used to be a really good solid newspaper here in town that really went in depth. And I've talked about where I was an elected official. There used to be more local news coverage and stuff, but that's just, that's going all on, unfortunately, all over the country, less local news. But back to the caucus issue, um, they're complaining about that the instead of the ballot saying yes or no, the ballot just had one check for the whole group. But one third of the room wrote no 
on it. So I think they're going to play around with semantics of this. They're starting to be election deniers, kind of like um, uh, the 45th election president. Election deniers. I mean, are they going to storm City Hall? Like, what would like, that? What would their moniker like look those like? What's a denier? The U.S. Capitol on January sixth. Are they? I mean, at what <laughs> point are they going to accept the vote and realize? Look again. Never. I mean, I look my my can't my you know I, I'm not a fan of uh, some of the people running this state, and but the election results were pretty clear that um, on that. I think yeah. uh, you know at some point you got to rec- you know. Okay, could the ballot have been printed differently? But the result would have been the same. And, you know, could the process of the the way the caucus selected their candidates been different? Maybe, but the result would have been the same. The people of Lake Forest are happy with how Lake Forest is run. Is it perfect? No. But is it, we would take, I'm somebody that chose to live in Lake Forest less than a year ago. I'd take Lake Forest over any other place, the way it's being run and what's going on in our community. And I, I think the, I think the, the people have spoken on this and the the people have spoken and what it looks like to me, Joe, number one, the transparency group, they're uh, at least 50% Democrat, at least. All right. Liberal. That's me saying it, not anybody else. So that's number one. Number two, uh, one of the leaders of this loss to have this back door that Peru and Susan Garrett uh, tried to walk in. Now, I know the caucus is going to fix it, but this group, it's a little click. It's an outlier group. OK, I'm just going to say it's the liberal group. And you can say that we are the conservative group or middle of the conservative group. It is what it is. I sent a letter over to uh, Herka. He has not put it up on his site, even though he he welcomes all input. So uh, it took a lot of time. It talk, took a lot of spell checking to get that letter done and proofreading. <laughs> you uh, need a spell checker. <laughs> and chat GPT. But it's, it's sent to John Turka, and he didn't put it up because they're not transparent. Anybody who doesn't allow comments on their stuff is not transparent. Yeah, so I, I was tra- really disappointed to see that because – you're like I said at the beginning of this conversation here. Your letter is posted on the Lake Forest podcast Facebook page. You also sent it into the Patch, who published it uh, as well, so it's available for reading. Um, and I think you know the, the the letter itself talked about the text of it. Um, you've been pretty open, and, and you know, and again, this I, some of this was as a result of a letter that the patch posted from the daughter of a former alderman, Ms. Karras, um, criticizing the podcast, saying uh, it's very anti Lake Forest and everything. <laughs> and you, Mr. Fact Checker, went out and just Googled her name and found that she had done, she's a, a, a stand-up comedian, kind of like you. Uh, but it's kind of funny that I you're, found that. You're a sit-down comedian. Uh, but <laughs> uh, but she, in one of her routines, said... My name is Reese Karras, and Jamal's right. I did grow up in a pretentious suburb. I'm not going to say which one, but it is Lake Forest. <laughs> um, uh, what was it she said about Lake Forest? Oh, I, I grew up in a pretentious suburb. I'm not going to name it. Oh, but it's Lake Forest. Like, yeah, okay. so, I mean... Look, and I understand, hypocrites. I, I know you took a little. I know you took some blowback from this from some folks. So, but here's here's the reality: is if you're an adult, she's an adult. She's twenty, I think twenty three, from what I heard. Um, if you're an adult and you're going to write a public letter criticizing uh, a, uh, in this case, the podcast, but criticizing anything, don't be, don't get all shocked if someone then looks Retorts. you up and. And you did something that you just criticized, which was you're saying you're hurting Lake Forest by 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 carrying the worst stereotype that people have of Lake Forest, that we're a pretentious community, which is we all know anyone that's lived here knows is not true. So, I mean, you know, people in glass houses shouldn't throw stones. So and, that's what that group is. And I'm yeah. the. The, the outliers on the liberal side, that's what they are. Not all liberals are like that. Not all Democrats are like that. It's just that in the days of social media where politics become an identity, 
that's the identity of those people in that small group, that Lake Forest transparent, whatever the hell that thing is. Uh, and you look at all those names on there, you look them up and you can see how they vote a certain way. And it is what yeah, it is. I mean, it's so public record. It's public record what primaries you vote in, uh, Republican or Democratic. Nobody knows how you vote in a general election, they, but they know if you did vote. But they but it is public record in Illinois of whether you voted in, in a Republican or Democratic primary. Our, our, our friend and former guest here on the show, uh, Lake Lake County Clerk Anthony Vega had like Vega. all county clerks have that have that public record. And so you did you did your homework and looked up the names on the transparency uh, website. And they're not all Democrats. Uh, there are some Republicans, including uh, the outgoing well, alder woman. We'll just say more than half husband. are Democrats. <laughs> the other but, order is independent, which means that they're Democrats. And then you had the Republicans. Yeah. So, I mean, it, you know, and again, I, I don't want to bring crew directly into this because, as I said, the morning after uh, the election, when we did that show, Prue was very gracious in conceding to Randy Tack. Uh, on election night, and I, uh, and then they then dropped the complaint against the frivolous complaint against the caucus with the state board of elections uh, because they knew that was going nowhere. So, and Prue uh, since then has been silent. So let's respect that. Um, but the other folks in this group, she's been silent. She to... left town the next day. All right, wherever she did, <laughs> let's let's. I'm trying to take the high road here. Not um, me, but. It, <laughs> um, but the other folks, the, the folks that I think were behind her candidacy, can't let it go and can't accept the fact that, again, the people didn't just speak. They shouted. It was like, what, 57, 58 percent. The, the results were certified last week by Clerk Vega. Um, the people have spoken. Um, that's not to say, of course, that democracy, everyone should still have a say. Like I said, I um, I've. Being a Republican in Illinois, I voted for a lot of folks that lost elections, but I still speak up yeah. about things that are of concern to me. So that's fair. That's all fair. But um, they they seem to want to have it both ways with having transparency and stuff. But then they don't allow comments on their page. But then they said, OK, we don't allow comments because there's um, what was the word? A trolls commenting on on stuff. Um, so if you want to say something, Back write checker. it in a letter and we'll send, we'll post it. Well, again, maybe, maybe by the time this airs, it gets posted or because this airs, it gets posted. It's not going to get posted. So let, well, Joe, let's see. Look, but let's Joe, talk, but I want to talk, I, I, I want to talk about Pete, what you said in the letter, because if, if folks haven't read it, I urge them to take a minute. It's not, it's not a dissertation. It can be read in the, we in welcome minute. all. Exactly. Um, I think it would be terrific. You, uh, I wish during the campaign, Prue Beidler had come on this show. I think it would have been very engaging. Who knows? If she had come on the show, she might have won the election. Um, hey, hey, because yeah, I, I would think have had would a have... different. I would have had a different opinion. I would have more respect. Yeah. But Joe, I like to quote a famous uh, celebrity: uh, "You can wish in one hand and crap in the other, and see which one fills up first. I don't know which celebrity said that. <laughs> Grumpy or old man. Um, I'll quote from my favorite my favorite quote that I say a lot these days, and that's Margaret Thatcher: "Is people um, people that stand in the middle of the road get hit by traffic from both sides." And that's me these days. I'm I'm kind of in the middle of the road. I want to, but uh, like I I think I would hope, you know. And we used you used in the in the letter the example of Anthony Vega, the the clerk. You had taken some shots at him. You guys were comparing him to John Travolta, so but maybe that's a good thing being compared to John Travolta when he looked nothing like Travolta. Yeah, I should be compared uh, but, to John Travolta. But he came on here and had a great conversation, cleared up some of the stuff that we thought had had. We thought we were accusing some uh, shadiness there with the polling place changes and stuff, and it turned out to be anything but. He 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 set the record straight, and I really would urge whether it's the people from the transparency group. Whether it's people from <laughs> block the bo block the box, <laughs> same people, or it could be there's a lot of overlap. Sure, through Bidler, even though she's lost, if she wants to come on, um, she, look, she ain't coming you, on. I hope she does. I, I would welcome her with open arms onto this show, um, and we would. And you know what? I know you well enough to know that if somebody sits here in the show like you did with Anthony Vega, you treat them with respect. You'd let them be heard. 
You let yeah. them give their side of it. You may not agree with them, but that's fair. But but come on the show. This is your way. If you got an issue you want to talk about, um, we'll have you, know, you on. The, right? the, the, the pendulum is swinging the other way, my friend. People have had enough of this outlier crap, like the Tucker Carlson's, the dude on CNN. Oh, right? Don uh, Lemon. Ugh, good, yeah, riddance to both, good riddance to both of them. So, because look again, everyone's entitled to an opinion, and that's the great yeah, thing about yeah. But it's the people but at the, the same the time. Out, the outliers tune out the other seventy percent. Everyone else's opinion is what I'm saying, and and we're we are getting into a situation. And I say this again. We've talked about this on previous shows. I'm a lifelong Republican, but I'm a moderate Republican. I I worked for Governor Thompson, Governor Edgar, Judy Bar Topinka. All right. Um, these are people that none of those guys would probably even win a Republican primary today um, because and the same thing goes on. The Demo Democrat. I, I don't think Ronald Reagan could win a Republican primary today. And I don't think John F. Kennedy could win a Democratic primary today because all these talk shows. Kennedy would win the Republican. Internet that's why influencers have pulled the Republican Party hard right and the Democratic Party hard left. And like I said a minute ago. Margaret Thatcher said people that stand in the middle of the road get hit by traffic from both sides and it's hurting the country. And I think they were trying to creep that into the election um, with running somebody that had, you know, given all that money to Kim Fox, who just ended her career this week. Um, maybe she saw the Do we have anything to do with that, Joe? <laughs> maybe she saw the results from the Lake Forest mayoral election and saw uh, <laughs> that her big donor. Hey, uh, Reinhardt, you're next. Yeah, I hope he doesn't. I mean, seriously, there are some very serious issues there. And I think, again, this isn't a partisan thing. I know a lot of Democrats that have concern about crime. Um, and, you know, there's 100 states attorneys in this. There's 102 counties, 102 states attorneys, 100 of those states attorneys, many of whom are Democrat, like the Will County states attorneys are Democrat, the Kankakee County states attorneys are Democrat. They feel the same way about crime uh, as as most Republicans do and disagree with Kim Fox and Eric Reinhardt. And, you know, uh, Prue made the Prue went all in on Kim Fox twice. And I think that that was part of what cost her on um, this election. At, at the end of the day, the election was because Randy Tack was the best candidate. And I think people will be very happy with with what Randy does in his term as mayor. But look, again, if you have an opinion on this Come on here. Tell us we're wrong. We're big kids. We'll we, literally we'll <laughs> we are, yeah. Um uh but come on here and we like I like we did with, with Anthony Vega, we'll treat you with respect, we'll hear you out. You can you can say whatever you want. We may we will and in the case with Anthony, we ended up agreeing with, with him on a lot of stuff after he explained it. That's not to say we're gonna sit here and agree. But disagreement is healthy, and let's let's come on and let's talk. So Lake Forest Transparency Group, email Pete. What's your email address, Pete? Really hard, Pete at LakeForestPodcast.com or Joe at LakeForestPodcast.com. Yeah, no, he gave me one. Or no. never at LakeForestPodcast.com because <laughs> no, 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 they no, ain't no, never coming no on. <laughs> there's no such email address. These, these, but, these, um, I'll email make it. Email and come on. We'll be respectful. Maybe Rick Lesser can join us or uh, Scoo, whoever we got on here. And um, but they ain't let's never just, coming on, Joe. Well, all right, ain't never. But I hope, I hope, let's prove him wrong. Prove us wrong. Prove Pete Jansen's wrong that you will come on this show and and let's talk it out. We'll they, have they that are, friendly discussion, like we're sitting at a, at the bar at the Lantern and talking it out. No, hold, you, on, hold on, hold on, Joe. Uh, May first, uh, Monday. Oh yeah, boy. May first. What's going on, Joe? May 1st, uh, Randy Tack takes the oath of office as mayor of Lake Forest. I believe, what is it, 6.30 p.m. is the meeting? Yeah, that's, that's what I it's saw. So we will City be City Hall there, on uh, Deer Path downtown. Look for the so, on-air sign. Yeah, we'll be there. We'll be there. You, yeah, uh, there it is. There it you is. Wore that, uh, you wore that at the caucus meeting at the Gorton Center. And uh, boy, oh boy, if I, I, I don't know about you, but I've been getting a lot of questions like, how did you get that sign? How, does it, how did it power up? I mean, you had to have like a special That's just battery. my natural electricity, man. That's chemical <laughs> energy. It's coming off the heart here, man. <laughs> Yeah, your wife must. Your wife deserves the the Citizen of the Year award. Hey, everybody uh, needs two or three wives. Joe, thanks for stopping by. <laughs>
The Lake Forest Podcast is supported by viewers, listeners, and businesses just like you. Looking for the best pool supplies? Look no further than Doheny's Pool Supplies. With a history dating back to 1967, this family-owned business offers everything families need to keep their pools clean and sparkling from chemicals to equipment. Plus, customers enjoy free shipping on all orders. Visit Doheny's Pool Supplies today at doheny.com, D-O-H-E-N-Y.com to learn more. Forest Bluff Real Estate Team serves Illinois, Wisconsin, Lake Forest, and Lake Bluff. John Joseph Fidus, Laura Lee Van Fleet, and of course, Michelle Parnell. Get a free market analysis now at forestbluffrealestate.com. For the best cannabis in the world, look no further than Iliad Epic Grow. Owned by Lake Bluff's own Rich Ruzich, they are a cannabis cultivation center focusing on hard-to-find small batch products that will delight both the occasional user and Ganjier. When visiting Michigan, ask for it by name, Epic Products, exceptional process. For more information, email info at iliadgrow.com. Havy Communications has been helping first responders arrive safely since 1983. It's owned by Lake Forest own Mike Havy. Check them out at havycommunications.com. We'd also like to say we are thankful for our Patreon supporters. Matt A., Elizabeth C., Costa, Lance, Otto, RDM, John C. And shout out to the Lake Forest Breakfast Group, Broad Stop and Captain Mike's in Kenosha, the Greentown Tavern, and the Frolic Lounge in Waukegan.